All right, we're starting on facial bones and to include the zygomatic arches. So our clinical routine is a Waters, Caldwell, Lateral, and SMV. If you can't visualize both of the zygomatic arches, um, on the SMV, you're going to do individuals, and I'll show you that. But different um, facilities will have different routines. They may have a separate routine that is just zygomatic arches and not included on their facial bones. So make sure you check your routines for wherever you're working. So waters. You guys know waters now. It's the same. Um, they can be prone or erect, but um, MML, perpendicular to IR, so you're, you're getting that chin and EAM on the same plane, right? Um, your central ray is going to exit at the acantheon, and the OML creates that 37 degree angle to the IR. It's same kind of MAS KVP, all right? What am I looking for? On all the waters, right? We want the petrous ridges below the maxillary sinuses. Um, so this is just a nice visual here. It's identifying where your zygoma is, where your maxillary sinuses are. Okay, and where the arches are here to the mandible. Okay, this is another anatomy picture. Make sure you go through your anatomy. Another anatomy picture here. Okay, Caldwell. Caldwell, same pretty much as skull. OML perpendicular to IR. You're going to have your central ray 15 degrees caudad exiting at the nasion. And Petrus bridges are going to be projected into the lower one third of the orbits. Same. Just another um, anatomy example here. So looking at this x-ray demonstration here, I want you to evaluate it sort of for quality. Um, so look at it for me quickly all the way around. This is supposed to be a Caldwell x-ray, right? So number one that's jumping out at me is collimation. We've got down to the C-spine. We've got the whole skull. Do we need that? No. Let's collimate it in. And then what do I look at for positioning for head work? My petrous ridges. My petrous ridges are what tells me about my positioning. So these petrous ridges are where? I would say they're middle, um, maybe a little over middle midline of your orbit, right? So what does that mean to me? How do I determine which way I need to move my patient? Um, so... What you want to do is your petrous ridges, you are going to want to lift the chin up. That will lower your petrous ridges. If you tuck your chin down, they're going to raise. So we want to extend the patient's neck, lift their chin up a little bit, and watch our line, watch our OML, okay, to get those down to the lower third. Lateral facial bones really similar to that of lateral skull um, in positional wise. So you're going to want to make sure um, mid-saginal plane and interpupillary line are lined up here. You want to make sure that patient's in true lateral. So I always stand right in front of them. I look at the orbits across and coming straight down here, forehead to chin. Um, you're going to center directly to the zygoma midway between um, outer canthus and EAM. Okay, it can be upright or it can be recumbent. Okay, if they have really big shoulders, you may have a little OID here. If you think they can stay that without um, assistance, you can expose as that. Uh, you may have to slide a sponge in between the bucky and the patient's head to help keep them there. All right, you want the affected side toward the IR. So this patient is doing a right lateral. So if they have pain on the right, you want to make sure and put the right on. If it's not pain on either side, you can stick to the left, whichever, it doesn't matter. Lateral facial bones, we're looking for um, ideally the zygoma right in the middle. So I do not want the entire skull on your facial bones. Please don't let me see that. This is a nice anatomy picture here, identifying all your anatomy. Same sort of lateral identifiers that we're looking for. So close to superimposed mandible, cella tersica superimposed. Um, okay, we're looking at sort of all the same things to determine if we're lateral or not. SMV, uh, basically identical um, 
really, really similar to that of the skull or the sinuses SMV, right? So we're looking to have the patient sitting down, supported, back supported, or they're going to be laying down. Their um, neck is extended, and the IOML, you want parallel to the IR. So we're really looking just below the eyes, making sure that I tend to look at forehead and chin too, right over the top. I think that's important. Um, and then just sort of trying to do this quickly, right? This is not a comfortable position for them. So you wanna make sure um, and kind of get yourself completely set up and um, do this fairly quickly, right? So, and then for, I think I forgot to write your um, central ray on there. So central ray is going to be um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Central ray, midway between zygomatic arches, about an inch and a half inferior to mandibular symphysis. Okay, looking for basically we're looking for the zygomatic arches on here, which is what you want to see side by side. Okay. This is anatomy picture here, showing you the arch. There's a modified waters um, for facial bones. We don't do this routinely at clinical, um, but it's definitely something you want to keep in mind for boards. So it's same, it exits at the acantheon, but this is the only one that I know of that uses the LML. So LML is perpendicular to IR and OML is the 55 degree angle to IR. So instead of the 37 degrees, it's that 55, okay? This, I think, is the only one um, that the putrous ridges are in sort of the half point of the maxillary sinuses. Oh, and that one I would note, because I've seen it on some board review, this is the ideal projection for um, possible orbital blow-up fractures or foreign bodies in the eye. So zygomatic arches, at our clinical site, we do not have a separate order for zygomatic arches. It's included in our facial bones. But you may work somewhere else where they may have a different routine. So this is just an example of a possible routine that you might have for zygomatic arches. Um, anatomy, right? So know what it's formed by. The SMV we call the jug handle view. Um, it kind of looks like a jug handle if you hold on to like a milk jug or something, right? Um, so your text may call it the jug handle. So you're going to put them to an SMV. Ideally, you get both on on one in your ideal world. If you're using a grid, make sure you use a grid technique. If you're going non-grid, make sure you know what to use, okay? So ideally, you see both of these zygomatic arches. This is an um, obvious fracture of that one. This is a little bit rotated. See how you can see they're not sort of straight up and down. They're tilted over to the side. A little bit of rotation. <clears throat> Here you can easily evaluate rotation, right? So we can see this zygomatic arch on this side very clearly. Over on this side, we can't. So you have to determine which way your patient is rotated or tilted, um, or maybe both, right? They're not in a true SMV. I don't think they're IOML is in correct position either, looking at the top here. Um, so you're gonna look for symmetry on the sides here, and can I visualize my zygomatic arches? So if this is your SMV, you're gonna need to repeat for the left zygomatic arch by itself. This is an artifact, watch out for those zippers or necklaces or anything like that that could show up as your artifact, okay? So if you cannot visualize one of the um, zygomatic arches on your SMV, what you're gonna do is do a separate one. It's called an oblique, inferior superior, tangential projection of the zygomatic arch. It's got a really big name just to separate one of the arches, okay? Still in the SMV, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tilt their head 15 degrees away from the affected side, and then you're gonna rotate the head towards the affected side 15 degrees. Tilt away, so this is not straight on anymore, okay? Rotate the nose towards. Look for the shadow, see the shadow on the wall, Bucky, here? Look for the shadow of that zygomatic arch. 
and you're going to kind of skin it, skim it. Remember that tangential term, all right? Um, so watch for that. This is just showing you kind of from the top of the head. So see how he tilts the chin and then the face is rotated towards. So the head is away from the affected side, but the nose went towards it. And they're trying to open up that <clears throat> zygomatic arch by itself. So kind of looking like this here. All right, so you don't want it superimposed. This is a beautiful one, nice wide open. Um, a modified town, okay, really similar to that of a skull town, just central ray is a little bit different, so one inch um, superior to glabella, you want to pass ideally through the mid arches. This is a really poorly sort of penetrated image, but um, here's your arches here, and I think I have a better one. Oh yeah, here. Okay, so zygomatic arches here and here, right? And I think that was it.